morning. My name is Stephen Conkey, and I'm your community leader for this Mass. We welcome everyone, we welcome everyone to our celebration. Thank you for joining us. Our guidelines require that your mask cover your nose and mouth throughout the entire Mass. There will be no contact during the sign of peace, but please acknowledge each other's presence at this celebration. Please stand and welcome our pastor, Father Jerry Hurley. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to our celebration, and as we begin, we pause once again and call to mind our need for his forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask the Blessed Mary Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God of mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O God, who will that your only begotten Son should undergo the cross to save the human race, grant, we pray, that we who have known his mystery on earth may merit the grace of his redemption in heaven through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Numbers. With their patience worn out by the journey, the people complained against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up from Egypt to die in this desert, where there is no food or water? We are disgusted with this wretched food. In punishment, the Lord sent among the people serpents, which bit the people so that many of them died. Then the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned in complaining against the Lord and you. Pray the Lord take the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a seraph and mount it on a pole, and if any who have been bitten look at it, they will live. Moses accordingly made a bronze serpent and mounted it on a pole, and whenever anyone who had been bitten by a serpent looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. Do not forget the works of the Lord. Do not forget the works of the Lord. Hearken, my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter mysteries from of old. Do not forget the works of the Lord. While he slew them, they sought him and inquired after God again, remembering that God was their rock and the Most High God, their Redeemer. Do not forget the works of the Lord. But they flattered him with their mouths and lied to him with their tongues, though their hearts were not steadfast toward him, nor were they faithful to his covenant. Do not forget the works of the Lord. But he, being merciful, 
forgave their sin and destroyed them not. Often he turned back his anger and let none of his wrath be roused. Do not forget the works of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, No one has gone up to heaven except the one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that all who believe in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Celebrate an interesting feast, the feast of the uh, exaltation of the Holy Cross. Um, commemorating uh, two events, really. The, um, historically, the feast day goes back to the 4th century, celebrating the discovery in, they say, the year 320, by the discovery of the original cross of Christ by St. Helena, who was the mother of the Roman emperor, uh, Constantine. Um, she uh, had journeyed to uh, Jerusalem to retrace the steps of Jesus and uh, his life. And Constantine, her son, later built uh, a church on the site of Mount Calvary. Uh, and legend has it that St. Helena uh, took a dying woman uh, to touch uh, each of the, them and to touch the, the cross, and uh, they were restored. There are a lot of um, celebrations about it. The readings uh, take the Old Testament experience and the New Testament experience and the idea of being raised up through the power of God, through the power of Christ. The Old Testament experience, the serpents in the desert on their journey when they were being rebellious and uh, they turned away and uh, cried out to Moses, uh, saying, Why did you and why did God bring us out into this desert to die? Uh, And now the serpents and uh, the food is no good, and we are going to die out here. And uh, they uh, realize um, that they were wrong in their actions. And they turn to Moses and they say, We are sorry. Uh, please speak to God on our behalf so that we would be reconciled and we may continue our journey. It's a common phenomenon in the Christian journey. We come back to be reconciled and we say we are sorry, God. Please redirect the way of our steps. And uh, so the solution is, let's take the very thing that was uh, odious, uh, the serpent, and create a serpent and raise it up on a pole and anyone who is bitten and looks upon it. What a prototype of the cross and the crucifixion ultimately in the New Testament experience that looking upon the one who was crucified would bring life to all 
followers. And so today, celebrating the power that comes from the exaltation of the Holy Cross and the invitation to us to have the cross exalted in our own lives as a, a means of healing and comfort that come to us in the face of difficulties, in the face of struggle, the people of Israel struggling along the journey in the Old Testament, and now ourselves struggling with our own struggles, but turning to him, the one crucified, and looking upon him in faith and knowing that we would have life in him. Let us turn to him now and offer him our prayers and our petitions. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may be a model of forgiveness and mercy in a world that shouts out for vengeance and retribution, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For state and national leaders, that they may temper justice with mercy as they enact and enforce the laws of our land, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those seeking forgiveness, from those they have wronged, and for those who believe that they cannot be forgiven, that they may know God's unconditional and eternal promise of mercy and forgiveness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For parents and catechists, and all those who teach the faith to children, catechumens, and learners of all ages, that their ministry may help both student and teacher grow in knowledge and passion for their faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our faithful departed brothers and sisters who have died in the hope of rising again, especially Rita McDonald, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for Winnie Broman, who will be having surgery in the morning. We ask you to bless her, bring her safely through that surgery. And we pray for all others who are suffering, who are sick, from any kind of ailment or anguish of mind or body in our parish community, we pray that they experience, uh, through the power of the Holy Cross, uh, they experience your healing and saving power, we pray to you, Lord. Father, all of these, our prayers and our petitions, we bring to you. We ask that you accept them and grant them, for we offer them with faith in Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, the work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice of ours may be acceptable to God, who is our Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of his name. For our good and the good of all his holy church. May this offering, O Lord, which on the altar of the cross canceled the offense of the whole world, cleanse us, we pray of all sins through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you place the salvation of the human race on the wood of the cross so that where death arose, life might again spring forth, and the evil one who conquered on a tree might likewise on a tree be conquered through Christ our Lord. And so we join the angels and saints in proclaiming your glory as we say, Holy Holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Paul and all of your saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And may the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant, Pope Francis, our Bishop Joseph, and all of the bishops with the clergy, and the entire people your Son has gained for you. Listen graciously to the prayers of the family whom you have summoned before you, and in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. And there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God, O Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now we pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always freed from sin and safe from all distress. As we await in blessed hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. And let us take a moment to be aware of his peace, to be grateful for it, and share it with one another. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Having been nourished by your holy banquet, we beseech you, Lord Jesus Christ, to bring those you have redeemed by the wood of the life-giving cross to the glory of the resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God continue to bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mass is ended, and we go now in peace to love and to serve God and each other. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Let us pray our prayer, please, if you can read it. Here is my promise, Lord. I commit to look for the face of God in every face I see. I commit to respect and act with empathy and compassion toward all, especially those who are struggling, those whose beliefs, values, lifestyles are different from mine. I will do my part to stop the spread of the virus, prejudice, racism, poverty, and negativity. I can only do this through you, with you, and in you, Almighty God, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hope you all have a wonderful day. I'm glad you were able to join us this morning. We are now offering all three Masses on the weekend. Please go to the St. Paul website to register for any of the weekend Masses. We have subscribed to Flock Notes, which allows us to send out e-bulletins to the parish. If you did not receive the e-bulletin this past week, please go online to the St. Paul website to register your email address. Please wait to be dismissed from your pew. Please maintain social distancing as you exit the building. Thank you. Thank you.